I'm Ross Duffer. I'm Matt Duffer. And uh, yeah, we created Stranger Things. And the girl? She can't have gone far. Did you have any clue it would be as successful as it's been? We knew a certain audience it would appeal to. Um, we knew it would appeal, or thought it would appeal to the people who grew up like us loving these um, movies from the 80s. And, and, and then what we were hoping and praying was that it would also work for a newer, younger generation. You know, I think one of the reasons Stranger Things worked is there were a lot of people we were able to bring in who we felt are very talented, but who were also inspired by the same films that we were, so we were all speaking the same language. And then, you know, you kind of trust them to do their thing yeah. um, and, and you let them go. And so, and then that ended up, that's really, that, so that, that made it really, really fun. The show was a huge chance. We, they, they were taking a huge chance on us. It was a very, there was nothing sexy about the project. Did you know when you signed on that you were in for this wild one year ride? Uh, well, Netflix, I mean, that, well, yeah. we knew the minute Netflix was interested because they move fast. Even nor most places, whether it's Hollywood Studios or the other networks, they take more time, maybe they'll shoot a pilot and then they'll develop it, but Netflix is just like, you know, they, to their credit, they bought into this vision and then they were like, let's go, and they supported it all, you know, to the very end. There's that line I like, you know, that Dustin says in episode six when she's like talking about Eleven. He's our friend and she's crazy! And I feel that way about Netflix. Netflix is our friend and she's crazy. No! If that didn't come from the tropical lights, oh. no, that, that came from something else. The Demogorgon! How important is the 80s as a character in Stranger Things and in the storytelling? It's, a, it's very important, obviously. One of the things that we loved, loved about being able to set it in, that, you know, obviously it is, it is, it is pre-internet, it is, it is pre-cell phone. I think we were the last generation yeah. to, to grow up without the internet. So when you went out, when we went out with our friends, um, you know, and you know, we grew up in North Carolina, and you know, you would go out, and there's tobacco fields, there's a, a railroad track, and you're wandering around, and your parents have no way of accessing you, um, and 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 so you could become lost, and you could, you know, you feel like you're gonna get um, find yourself on this, find you know, a treasure map. But or... yeah, yeah. So when you you find yourself on some sort of incredible journey, and I think that's that that the Goonies scenario of oh, we're actually gonna we're gonna find a treasure map, and we're gonna find a. Uh, a pirate ship. I mean, it feels actually within the realm of possibility when you're that young, which is what I think why those movies resonated with us so much. Because you could really see yourself. When I saw the Goonies for the first time, I, I was like, I, it felt like you were with those kids on because they, they felt like you, us. They felt like our friends, and so that's something that was really important to us. That I, I and that, that it's really hard to write that now when. The, you know, it's a very different experience now when you're when you're yeah. growing up, and you know, I, I like that these when these kids went off looking for their friends, it really felt like they could be in danger. There's no parent tracking them. Up. Well, let's talk about that inspiration. Yeah. Uh, in many ways, Stranger Things is like a tale of two Stevens: Steven Spielberg <laughs> yeah, yes. and Stephen yeah, King. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have gotten praise actually from yes the ones you were paying tribute. Yeah. yeah. Stephen King actually said that this was pure fun, and gave it an A+, plus, must see, uh, later said it was like watching his greatest hits in a very complimentary way. Yeah. How does that feel that the people you were paying homage to actually dig what you do? It's an, I mean, yeah. that, on, I mean, it's an, it's just incredible. It's hard to, be, it's hard to believe. And I remember the first Stephen King tweet came out right before the, we, we had our, our premiere and it was just, I mean, Matt and I could barely function that night because we're, yeah. we're just blown away and then, well, he, uh, Stephen King tweeted also before it had become anything, you know what I mean? So that, that really affected me um, in, in a major way. But to have people who um, we really look up to and we respect and we, you know, and we wanted to pay homage to their work. We, we still wanted it to feel, you know, unique to us and, and we just wanted to be inspired and respectful of their work, but also, and, and you know, we were very much inspired by it, but to have them um, reach out to us is like, very surreal. Let's talk about Winona Ryder. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you knew you wanted to cast her. Yeah, yeah, she was what, the What first was her choice. reaction when you approached her? Uh, you know, it was, you know, 
our casting director, Carmen Cuba, it was her first idea for anyone, for any any role. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we felt, we're like, that's it. You know, we're really lucky. I mean, she just responded to the script and, you know, she liked the script and wanted to meet. The scary thing, I think, to Winona and to a lot of actors, especially when they're making the move into television, um, when they're used to film, is, is it's a huge uh, commitment in terms of time, in terms of their time. And plus, um, you know, a risk because she's the, she really, I mean, she knew this, that she'd be the face of it. She's a, the, we always knew Joyce, whoever we ca cast as Joyce would be the, the, you know, that's the one star role we wanted, which is why we went after Winona so hard. So she's the face of this thing. So it really, you know, needed to work for her. And, you know, yeah, luckily she, <laughs> she trusted us. Just find my son, Hop. Find him. Deep, very nuanced story arc for her. Very yeah. different work than we've seen from her. As you see this actress that, that you sought after, that you felt nostalgic about, get what are the best reviews of her career. Right. Does that make you feel some pride in that? I mean, yeah, well, I mean, we're just happy for, we're just happy for Winona. The fact that we knew she was taking a big risk uh, and a big chance on us. Um, and, and she's really, without her, I don't think the show would have broken through the way it did. So we were really relying on her. So I'm just glad that the show has also been really good for her and that she's, I mean, she's thrilled with the response. She's overwhelmed by it. I want to ask you about what's arguably the most crucial casting for this <laughs> series. Uh, yeah. You have said before that you thought this was a tough sell because people didn't seem to understand the idea of a, a show aimed at adults yeah. Featuring children as the central characters. Yeah. yeah. How did you cast these kids? I really, it's just we knew we knew that this would make or break the show. That a bad, even one out of our all of our kids, one bad child performance, uh, would I think it would destroy it. And so because, but so we knew very early on this was the most important thing for the show. We had so little material actually written at that point that we had them auditioning with you know scenes from Stand by Me and and and. Did we do ET? I don't know, but we were using other films from that era just just to generate enough material for these kids to read. And then we flew them into Los Angeles and read them against each other. And they, you know, they, the boys that we cast just clicked. Um, and now they're really great friends. Shut. Up. You don't even have to watch the full auditions because you know, you know, you know within three seconds. It's like at three seconds, you mostly you just you you turn them off, and then you go to the next, and you go to the next, and then every once in a while you see a tape and there's something so true and authentic about it and you want to keep watching that kid for instance Ga you know Gaten who plays Dustin we more or less cast him off the the, the first tape there was something it was like this kid is magical <laughs> he's going to be in the show some way somehow yes which isn't so And I remember it was hard especially with Eleven who you know who's played by Millie Brown because this is a character that doesn't have a lot of lines. So I remember when it really clicked to us that she was something special. It's because we're filming these auditions and when you see the close up of her and you see all the emotions that are going on just sort of without her saying a single word, just through her eyes and through her reactions to kids, which is just something that most child actors can't do. You know, I think it was her trying on a wig for the first time and looking in a mirror. And that was it, wordless audition and it was just, my God. This girl is something yeah, special. Yeah, it, it was awesome. Yeah. Wow. She looks pretty. Your work seems to center around people who feel misunderstood or feel like outsiders on some level. Yes. Does growing up as twins identify uh, something we did feel in like we, I, that way? Well, yeah, it's so funny because everyone goes, oh, I wish I had a twin. And I was like, we really didn't want to be twins because, because we were really shy. And then, um, and, and then it draws a lot of attention to you, especially when you're really young. And you're like, oh, it's so cute. And you know, I hated it. Um, you just wanted to be left alone. But you do feel a little bit like a weirdo. It's not like you have superpowers, but you have something that is different, is different from everyone else. And so I do think with, with all of our kids, we wanted to make them, you know, and, you know, even in Jonathan and whatever, that if these are people that aren't quite, uh, a, aren't quite fitting in in the world. And I think what we wanted to try to say is actually that's, it's better. It's better to be different in this world than just be the same as everyone else. That's, that's boring. That's the suit. So superpower. that's your superpowers yeah. that, yeah, you don't, you're, you, you, you don't fit in. Who are you in trouble with? Bad people? The show is so filled with heart yeah. and emotion and meaning. 
does having that element of horror and darkness and danger allow you to tell more yeah. of a story with well, that Well, it's sort of the traditional good versus evil thing. And we wanted to get back to the simplicity of that. I mean, we love, we're Star Wars fans. I love Star Wars. I love, I love the, the, the sort of classic tale of, of good versus evil, Lord of the Rings. Um, and The Hobbit is, you know, I mean, those are those are the same, and those were the stories that we love, you know, really fell in love with. And I think on TV specifically, you know, there's been a there's this trend of the you know the antihero, the guy who is a kind of a. Sh I'm sorry. So there's the guy who's kind of a really bad 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 person or a very complicated individual who happens to be really good at his job or whatever. Like I've seen that story so so many times, and it's been done incredibly well. By like Vince Gilligan and, and David Chase, and it's, it's, you don't even want to compete with that. So the idea here was to tell a story about you know really good, good-hearted people. One of my personal favorite moments yeah. in the entire series that was beautifully written, beautifully acted, beautifully directed, uh, is a story that's told to the boys about the flea and the acrobat. Oh yeah. Where on a tight wire, on a tight wire, yeah. the acrobat has limited ability and access yes. to the tight rope. Yeah but the flea has the ability to travel the entire rope at will and jump on all the different levels. Yes. In some ways, is this your transition from the acrobat to the flea, as far as the choices you can make now? Oh, I hadn't thought, I mean, I guess in a way, a little bit, right? Yeah. It, def it definitely, doors have, you know, that were bolted shut have blown open, um, which is really fun and exciting and, um, so honestly, right now though, we're so in, still into in Stranger Things mode and Stranger Things world, and we really feel, um, you know, loyal to that, and it's it's kind and of like our baby. And, and then also all the people involved in the show and in in the in the cast, and um, you know, put trust in us. So I think a lot of our focus right now is still is is still very much on that, and trying not to get distracted and, by everything else. And the amazing thing about Netflix is they allow. I mean, they even then, even before this thing was a hit. They trusted us like they they knew we would make a hit, and so the amount, the level of freedom that we we had was just incredible. So it's not like we felt restrained in that, and so we you know to we just want to continue playing around in this in this sandbox because it's just we're it's, not bored it, yet. No, no, we're not. So you're you're talking about moving forward. Yeah, I'll ask the question that everyone wants to know: What is the status with Stranger Things season two? You know, people are still finding season one, and they're letting that sort of breathe and become it, become its own thing. But the hope is, I think, for, for everyone, the hope is to uh, continue the story for a little bit. But at the end of the day, right. it's us trying to do what we did with season one. It's just what do, what do, what do we want to see? What makes us excited? You exactly. know, even if it's a little weird or mm -hmm. a little dark or whatever, we have to assume that if we think we hope that if we think it cl it's cool yeah. that the you know clearly what what we like yeah. and re resonates with a lot of other people so we'll just continue um, um, trusting our instincts and and yeah. you know we you know we have specific things we like and don't like and we'll continue to um, and and also in sequels in general are just you know are very difficult I mean you know because you know of course we're talking a lot about sequels now and, and looking back at the great sequels and there aren't a lot and then, you know, even really amazing filmmakers and writers mess up sequels all the time. So, um, you know, you try to look at those and learn, look at the lessons that we, we, can, we can learn from those. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tricky, but it's still a lot of fun. Yeah. There's a trend in television to totally reboot your series <laughs> the, yeah. the, every season. It doesn't sound like this is what you guys well, wanted to. Well, yeah, I know. And there were some articles I read. They're like, I think it should be. I think it's a mistake <laughs> to continue with the characters and, uh, and that it should be rebooted. They should do the, do the Fargo thing, uh, do it as an anthology. And Stranger Things even sounds like it could be an anthology. Uh, I guess my rebuttal to that is... Um, we don't feel like we're done. And also, I think the reason people feel like that this story is done is because, you know, we really wanted it to feel like a movie. So we set up the main tension of Will Goes Missing, and we wanted to resolve that main tension by the end. So we wanted it to feel like it, it had a, cli a movie climax that, that was resolved, and then there's some dangling threads. And, um, and, and, but there's a lot of unresolved issues. There's still a portal to another dimension that's wide <laughs> open. Um, Will was in another dimension for um, a week, perhaps and it's, not and, doing and so which well. is probably <laughs> that doesn't have a great effect on him. And Doesn't so, but anyway, like but the idea <laughs> is that um, what we want to treat it as we're gonna there's gonna be a new main tension, 
And you know, the goal is that tension is also going to be re resolved very much in the way that you do uh, a movie sequel. And I think I, my hope is that by the end of season two, um, people are like, well, now it definitely should, now it should be done. There shouldn't be another one. <laughs> and then we'll see. Cut. Yeah. yeah. That was it. <laughs>